All right, everyone, we're back. Uh, thanks for bearing with us. We have Alex with us. I already kind of introduced the panel, Alex, and um, we went through the results of the uh, poll so far. Thanks everyone for answering. Uh, Alex, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, so the reason that I believe this came up and why Matt had asked me to make this presentation is uh, at the last, um, meeting for trust advisors that we had, uh, there was a, a number of questions that came up from individuals uh, who are looking for more information CRM related uh, because they were either using Excel spreadsheets or with no CRM altogether. Um, and for those that are asking what's a CRM, uh, let's first get that acronym out of the way. It's a client relationship management tool. Um, and it's the it's a single source of truth, single uh, location where you should have a uh, majority or all of your clients located uh, so that you're able to easily and effectively um, coordinate information, gather uh, details if you need to reach out to somebody. And then also it helps manage your, your own team um, internally in a automated fashion um, and then also depending on how you set up the CRM and then also depending on what your tech stack looks like, you're then able to use your single source of truth, the CRM system, as a feed or as a tool into other systems so that you only need to update one location. Um, and I believe Matt, Matthew has already uh, mentioned the poll that's up um, there's two really quick, simple questions up there. Um, what email service you're using? Um, everybody who's responded has said G Suite, Google services. Um, and then what CRM system are you using? Um, basically everybody has either said they're not using one or they're using an Excel spreadsheet. The one vote for HubSpot, that was me in order to be able to see the results of the poll. Um, so as people put in more responses into the poll, we'll be able to update that as well. Um, but what I will show you is what HubSpot looks like. Um, one of the comments or one of the things that we had mentioned on this is that initially uh, you shouldn't look at it as just a cost. Um, you should look at, look at it as a return on your investment. The initial investment you'll most likely have is actual time. HubSpot, which what's great about it is that it has the ability for you to have up to a million contacts in the system at no cost after that, or if you want some of the more advanced features, um, that will be, that will have a cost built into it. Um, but as a starting point to test out the system, whether it's for a month or two, um, there's no cost for you. Um, and it's a great thing. I, I think everybody should look into doing, um, but I'll give you a quick, um, view as to what we're using it for and how we use it. And then we can go from there. So, um, what I've done to save us all time is I've created uh, G Suite, which everybody knows and loves. Um, and then also I've created a HubSpot. In order for you to sign up for your own HubSpot, you just simply go to the HubSpot.com website, click on start, uh, start free, um, and then just click here, get free. And then you fill out a couple of answers, um, log in with your email, and then it will set up your HubSpot um, location. Um, you'll come here, this is your starting point. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that you can look at this. Uh, there is HubSpot for marketing, sales, uh, service, and then operations. HubSpot marketing helps you uh, target your Facebook, Instagram, Google ads. Sales uh, helps you track your leads and the conversations you're having. Service is any tickets or support that you need and then operations, which is going to be um, automations and the back end of your system. Um, some of the quick things that I think are going to be the simple things to, to show people the tools that, and resources that you can get out of this, where it's going to save you perhaps a couple of minutes off of each interaction, but if you have 20 or 30 of these interactions a day, could end up saving you an hour or two, um, and then go from there. So I think, 
the very first one is uh, the contact, um, the contacts. Um, and what this is, is it will automatically, as you email people or as you receive emails, you will automatically have the name and email address associated with them automatically go into HubSpot. And it's as simple as you, when you send an email, sorry, let me take a step back. Um, so you, you create the HubSpot. And the reason that Google is such a good interaction between the two is if you're using Chrome, you can install the HubSpot extension into Chrome, which will include um, your contact list, all of your contacts, any tasks that you have. And then as you um, interact with the emails, it will automatically pull up the contacts as well as any tasks that are associated with that particular person that you're working with. The other item behind that is when you're drafting emails. So let's say drafting an email straight from your Chrome, um, from Chrome, it will actually automatically give you your contacts and add them to your contact list within HubSpot. The other item that you're able to do is there's certain templates that you're able to do within HubSpot. And then also what they call snippets, um, where if you're doing uh, something on repetitive motion, you're sending out, let's say, uh, emails to all of your clients and you need to send out, let's say, an email that says, hey, here's a report. This person's in your HubSpot. In this case, it's a made up email address, john at gmail. In HubSpot, the person's name is John Doe. And the way that your snippets are set up, it automatically is able to put in contacts first name and then whatever email or template that you use on an ongoing basis. Um, some of the other things that we like to use out of uh, HubSpot is uh, meetings. So what you're able to do is you're able to send uh, somebody a link for a uh, 15, 30 or 60 minute meeting and you're able to manage all of these um, so that they are able to instantly connect to your calendar and let's say this test um, text. um confirm the moment they confirm they get an email notification on their end about this and then you on your side will get you've booked by so-and-so has scheduled a meeting with you. And then if you have your calendar synced, it will automatically update your calendar. And the availability on the other side, when they're clicking on your calendar, will also depend on your availability within your calendar view. Um, so this helps automate the bookings of meetings. So if there's a um, difference in time zones, uh, this will help and allow for your clients to reach out to you even when um, they're not necessarily in the same time zone as you to confirm meetings or set up meetings with you. Um, and then the other things is that it will automatically track and include Alex test, which is the name I just used on the meeting, tax at it, um, alexrotenberg.com. That's the email address I used, associated company. Uh, and then what you're also able to do is you're able to see when this was created, um, when the contact was added to the um, HubSpot, and it helps you capture the information much easier. The other things that you're able to do is you're able to see where in the pipeline particular deals are, you're able to set up and change the pipeline depending on what your needs are. 
Um, and as you create deals and transactions within the pipeline, um, as your sales team does this, the management team is able to then do uh, reports and dashboards so that they're able to see, okay, we have um, this number of deals that are qualified to buy, this number of deals that are ready to close or what has already been uh, closed and won for the business. You're able to see and refresh the um, number of contacts, contracts, um, so that you know the health and um, deal what the business is doing without having to go to something like a QuickBooks or whatever financial systems you're using. Um, the other things that we like to do uh, within um, HubSpot is um, you're able to do emails directly out of HubSpot um, once you get the communications going. And then the other things on the server side, uh, you're able to create tickets um, that are then possible to be assigned to other people within the team for them to take care of um, and update and action on it. Um, a lot of these tickets can be, uh, can have different information within them. And then also what you're able to do is if you go to your contacts or your companies, you're then able to see, okay, this person, Brian, um, has a deal. Uh, he's had tickets that were opened. Um, if you send them files, uh, those attachments will show up in a particular location. Um, so you have your uh, history of any interactions that you have with the client. Um, and then also what you can do is um, not just track emails, but you can also track phone calls. Um, if you want to, we don't, uh, you can connect a phone system directly into HubSpot for it to call that phone number. Um, and then the other things that you can do is uh, take notes. So let's say you had a phone call, um, need uh, engagement letter, uh, need letter for 2022. You save the note, it shows up here. And then if you want to, you can actually action, pin it to the top. So as more actions and interactions with the client happen, um, these notes don't get buried. Uh, they'll stay at the very top, allowing for you to keep a record um, of any issues or any requests that have been done. Um, and as you have potentially every six months or an annual review with a particular client, you can say, hey, we were able to help you with X, Y, Z. Uh, the amount of activity or the amount of work that's necessary for you will result either in perhaps a reduction in fees or an increase in fees. Or it, it's easier to have those conversations when you, you're able to have very quick, concise interactions um, and notes, and then also allow for your entire team to put that in here. Um, depending on particular business that you're in, you're also able to connect, if it's necessary, um, other means of communications. So not just emails, but you can also connect things such as um, uh, Facebook Messenger, um, Instagram Messenger, um, a lot of the um, third-party conversation tools can be linked directly into HubSpot in order for you to manage and, and continue the conversations in multiple uh, formats um, that are helpful for your client, but also because it's all centralized into a single location like HubSpot, it allows you to have a single way of working with your clients. Um, and it makes things more efficient for you and, and your, your team. Um, Matthew, are, so think, you're, you're a tax CPA. So what are some examples? Like, how do you use it throughout the year? Are you using it for sending out monthly reports? Are you using it around tax deadlines? So the biggest ways that we're using it is um, when we have our um, discovery phone call with our new clients, 
we ask them a standard set of questions in order to be able to price out work. Um, so we'll definitely do that. Um, we also, a lot of our emails are very much similar, almost the same. Uh, so we use these snippets and templates very extensively. Um, and then the other big things that we use is calendar links. Um, we probably wouldn't be able to operate our business without it. Um, and then the other big ones are um, we'll send out um, requests for different information or lead capture uh, through different forms. And that's all possible to be done directly within HubSpot. Uh, where we're able to capture the information internally and then use that HubSpot data uh, for other tools that we're using. Awesome. And how can folks reach you? Uh, the easiest way to reach me is by email, uh, tax at Alex, A-L-E-X, Reutenberg, R-O-Y-T-E-N-B-E-R-G.com. Excellent. I just put it in the stage chat too, so folks can grab there. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, I need to get more in the habit of using tools like this. I've, I do half of this already, but um, it's good to see once you're, I assume, you know, once you're in the, the flow of doing this, that it just uh, ends up saving an immense amount of time. Yeah, it definitely helps once you get out of the old habits or the mm -hmm. bad habits. Um, and once you get into it, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. So uh, we'll take a short break here just for like three or four minutes. Um, we'll be back at uh, 310 Eastern or 1210 Pacific. And the next presentation is going to be focused on, uh, it, it'll be David Lamb who was on the first panel, um, but he's going to be showing how easy it is to take over a machine. Uh, thank you again, Alex. Um, everyone, yeah, just be back here in three minutes. We'll be live again with David. Thanks, Thanks Alex. Matthew. Have a good one.